My name's Fort, said the big robot. I guess I looked puzzled as he then explained. When the nice virus hit, their robot leaders encouraged them to choose their own names. His serial number was H9CTDBVSHJ42. So he thought Fort would be a nice nickname, or as he'd put it, Four Two Fort. Who? For a while, we were encouraged to show our individuality. I wish I hadn't bothered, he suddenly stopped and looked around. Come on buddy. We should find somewhere to hide, the robo-government helicopters patrol at night. Those platforms don't look very safe, be careful. I don't know how I'd managed without you. Did you see that saw? I saw the saw. Why are there saws here? It makes no sense. Someone did a great job blowing this place up. Thank you very much. Nearly there, concentrate. As we sat waiting for the helicopter to pass, we continued chatting. I told Fort about everything that had happened to me, about my quest to clean a million things, about my friends and about everything that had happened on the moon. All I want now is to go home, I said. You can come to my home, said Fort. I'm on the run but it's pretty safe there. When I asked Fort why he was on the run, he told me about everything that had happened to him, how after the nice virus there would be no more war and therefore no need for most soldiers. Soldiers like him. As my model was designed to destroy other robots, we were built with an incredibly powerful core, he said. There was no way to disarm us. So we were put to death. Because of our power, the only way we could be detonated was deep underwater, miles out at sea. Even then it caused huge explosions. But while we were waiting to get on the boat, I just sort of ran off. As soon as the helicopter had gone Fort said, Let's move.
Here we go. I wish you could fly right up to the sky, but I can't. Have you got a spare rocket pack? Jump on the spot in the sand so you don't sink. This used to be used for archaeology surveys. Exposed up here. Now, this was clearly worth something. Fort said that it would be best if we waited in this building. The helicopter still sounding nearby, and we were in no masses rush. We soon got chatting again. Fort explained how the robot cow had happened very quickly. It was a matter of days after the nice virus hit. Every robot that was deemed unnecessary was destroyed, even harmless ones. It was considered logical and for the greater good, he said. I wasn't sure what to say, I didn't think we could raise an army to fight the man in black, but I supposed I'd hoped we could do something to defend ourselves by the time they returned to Earth. As Fort filled the bird's dishes with food, I asked him why he carried them with him. They can't fly anymore so I feel kind of protective of them, he said, we found them in a bombed out building. It was so nice how he cared for them. I smiled and asked him their names. This is Barry, and this little lady is Alice. I don't know why I picked those names. But I knew why, and it made me smile. When we found them, they were badly hurt. But my friend, she nursed them back to health. I asked him where his friend was now. But Fort just looked at the floor and said, The helicopter must be gone by now. Got to help me take the gunship down. I'm not a soldier anymore. The killer instinct is still inside you deep down. in the past. I can't do this without you. I've got an idea help, but I'm a bigger target.
put some relaxing music on. That's her, wearing her favorite dress, 
said Fort. She was a concierge robot, classy, intelligent, and designed to serve man. But when all the men were gone, just like me, she wasn't needed anymore. Fort sighed, and gently placed the photo back on the shelf. I thought I would try to cheer him up. Looking around the room, I saw a battered old piano, and thought I would try playing the tune Heather had taught me. I told Vought how great I thought his house was, and I truly meant it. Vought I knew I needed to get back to my quest. However, things soon got serious when I mentioned my gloves and shoes. Do you mean the magic shoes of gravity defiance, Fort asked, and Atlas gloves of mighty strength? They sounded far grander when he described them, but I was pretty sure he meant the same things. The sacred artifacts, Fort said, but before I could reply he burst into an explanation about how there were certain things from some kind of half-remembered time that the robot rulers considered sacred and holy. I used to believe in it all, the words, the prophecies, I even believed in the Chosen One, said Fort. But after she... Well, I just couldn't swallow all the ghost stories and the nonsense about the afterlife. You know what I mean, buddy. I didn't know about the afterlife, or the Chosen One, but I knew ghosts were real. I then began to explain how Mr. Preston had told me the story about how Mrs. Silton had told him a story about the brother of a man who works with her uncle giving a young motorcyclist a lift after a crash outside the Black Wall Tunnel. He pulled up outside the motorcyclist's destination, but when the man turned around, the motorcyclist had vanished. So he knocked on the door and an old woman answered. When he asked her if she had a son, the woman burst into tears and said I did. But he died in a motorcycle accident exactly ten years ago, just outside the Black Wall Tunnel. And so we began a conversation that would take us long into the night. I shared the various philosophies that the old man had taught me, about life, the universe and Douglas Adams. While Fort explained the robot philosophies, how there was a yearly competition to find the Chosen One how they and only they would deserve the sacred artifacts, and how they would rule the world. It all sounded so grand. But I suppose I was tired. I'd be happy now if I could just sit and play some video games. Eventually Fort stood up. Well, it's late, he said. I need to recharge. How are your batteries? I honestly had no idea how my batteries were, so I smiled and said, I'll be fine here thanks. I'll do it, was the first thing I said to Ford in the morning. Do what? Came his reply with a strange look. So I explained how I would enter this chosen one contest, get these sacred shoes and gloves, then we would return home and defend the planet from the man in black. Who will buddy? Asked Ford. Me and you? He had a point but I knew Heather and the rest of my friends would help. Maybe it was the talk that Fort and I'd had, maybe it was the dream I had last night, or maybe it was just the urge to get home and make sure everyone was safe, but I suddenly felt like I could save the world. 
Come on then buddy, said Fort, show me what you've got. If you're going to win the contest, you'll have to be good. Fort leant back with a big smile, it's a long way, he said, to the contest I mean. It'll take us months to walk to the robot capital. We had best get going. <laughs> 